How's it going? Motor City Miner here coming at you from the farm with another update after my unboxing. So I got my two K10 Super Scalers here. Um, we're going to be setting these up today. I have no, I've never had one of these before. Um, I know Red Panda did a video on them. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what to expect. I, I don't even really remember much from this video. Um, I don't know if it's like a web GUI thing or how you even access these. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get these set up today. We got our FPGAs, as I mentioned, are out in this area. They're both quieter than my ASICs, but also FPGAs are rather heat intolerant. Um, so I plan on running these out here. I have no idea how loud these things are going to be. So they do have uh, two high-speed fans on the front, nothing on the back. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what to expect here. Sound-wise, um, we're going to find out together. Got the PSUs over here, so they do come with uh, 2400 watt PSUs. They're actually 2600, but rated for 2400 continuous. Um, lots of plugs, lots of plugs on these guys. I mean, we're looking at a good, what is that? 18 six pins, 19 with the control board. I think there's only one on the control board, yep. Just the one on the control board, so 19 per K10 Super Scaler. Again, these are the X1 models, so I'm not really sure what the X1 means. Um, we'll find out, I guess. And not really sure how to access these, so um, I guess for now we're just going to throw one of these on the shelf over there. That's a, these are real heavy, I'm not going to do it one-handed. But yeah, we'll throw one on the shelf over here. Um, it does require 240 volt power, so I'm going to use my uh, dongle, but I think this is the wrong one. I think these PSUs need a C13, C14. Yep, C13, C14. So I do have both. Uh, so we're going to hop over into the other room and um, get that real quick. Let's, uh, let's hop on over to Red Squadron. Yep, going in here. Uh, need to find the right key. Sorry, I just got here today, so I haven't unlocked everything yet. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go in Red Squadron here. So, right now you can see we've been running the C19, C20 cable. That's just what I was using last. So we're going to plop this up here. We're going to grab our testing... C1314 cable. Put that out through here. All right, so we got that out there. Uh, again, we just have these kind of zip tied to this power bank. Um, I think I'm going to turn off whatever else is in this power bank just in case. I don't know how much power this thing's going to take. So we're going to turn off our KD boxes down here and head back out. So, um, yeah, we got that out here now so we can easily plug in our K10 PSU. Uh, we also already have an Ethernet cable here from when I had an ASIC device here. Oh! I just, I just lost the cable back there. All right, we're gonna skip ahead in this video until when I get that back out here for you guys. All right, so we got our Ethernet already plugged in. We got our PSU plugged in. Um, now, so they have actually cable managed this pretty well. So there's a individual six pin, which is for your control board, which is nice uh, to have that separated out. You know, um, so we're gonna plug that in up here. And then the rest are bundled um, for the actual mining boards, the FPGA boards. Um, there's two bundles. There are three boards, but essentially these are, you know, at least they're bundled in a way that kind of makes sense in my mind. That, you know, that one six pin separate from everything else. Um, the one thing I will say is it looks like these are kind of short. Um, hmm. Maybe we will put the super scaler down a shelf. Maybe that's what we'll do. Uh, give me a second while I put this down a shelf. 
That way the plugs can go uh, down. Uh, just a second. All right, so we we dropped the KS uh, ten K not KS the K ten super scaler uh, below the PSU just because these cables are pretty short. So um, having them go from the side and up was pretty pretty much impossible. So, um, but yeah, ex again, perfectly um, cord bundled. So you got the one for the P uh, the control board. And then exactly the amount you need for all the actual hashing boards. It would be nice to see, you know, a more traditional ASIC setup for this, like a bus bar rather than all these plugs. But, um, you know, it'll work. So we're going to turn this on, see what happens. Um, jump over to the computer, see if we can figure out how on earth we uh, set the guy up. Um, but yeah, so here we go. Moment of truth. Hit that power switch, wherever it is. All right, so far it's uh, pretty quiet. Well, these uh, these fans don't make much noise, so that's interesting. Uh, you got a red light. I don't know if that's good or bad. Find out shortly, I guess. Uh, you got a red light on one of the boards, it looks like. I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, it's ramping up. A little more... Uh, I can hear a little more sound now. It would appear. So uh, let's go over to the computer and see what's going on. All right. So little change of plans. Um, I plugged in both super scalers actually a few days ago. Now uh, coming back to the farm, um, and in each one, one hash board would not work. Uh, no matter what I tried. Ended up contacting and support, working with them remotely. Um, I'll kind of go into a little more detail of that in a future video. Uh, I'll make like an actual how-to on how to fully set up this guy. Um, and lots of other information. Once I reached out to them, I got like all the firmware packages for the different um, algorithms that are available. Uh, you do have to like flash a new uh, firmware whenever you want to mine a different algorithm, at least for now. Uh, but also in a giant instruction packet. I'll kind of put all that in a different video. Uh, this is becoming an unboxing video because, like I said, uh, unfortunately don't have fully working units, so I want to wait until I have fully working units to do a how-to video on this thing. Now, so, uh, but I figured, you know, it's a good opportunity to talk. So right now, uh, Superscaler only sells used K10s. Supposedly new ones are going to be an option in the nearish future i don't know what that means i i don't that's just what they said they didn't give a date or anything but right now if you are going to buy one no matter who you're buying it from uh t-swift coastal crypto whoever uh it's going to be a used unit um they're gonna i have a i'm a little frustrated um uh, you know there's again i know that every all manufacturers test in big quotation marks um uh, but you can see that these are heavily tested um, you know, these are all advertised as factory tested units. Um, and, you know, I got two units over there and each of them had a bad hash board. So uh, QA, QC is a little lacking, I would say, um, unfortunately. Um, you know, they were just dead out of the box. Like, I didn't do anything. So a little disappointed there. Um, something to be aware of if you are going to buy these that, you know, they are used and in my experience, their QAQC is kind of hit and miss, apparently. Um, and they are, you know, kind of pretty heavily used, which you can tell here, you know, just all this crud that's been in here. Again, I didn't run these. So this is what they came like. Um, and I have some theories on this. I have no idea if they're right or wrong. But my guess, and just looking at hash rates for all the coins that have been, um, you know, mineable on the k10 over the last year red panda got one back in april um my theory is they probably have a whole fat uh, like whole warehouse of these probably like a thousand plus of these units and essentially they say they can make like five a day or something like that um and essentially once the new ones are made those get put into uh use operation for testing in this warehouse and then five are removed from service 
and say if that's the rate and say there's like a thousand or a couple of thousand, you know, essentially these could be mining for a year prior to them actually getting shipped out to you um, just because, you know, the turnover would be that slow. That's just kind of my theory, especially after seeing these and the condition they are in. It kind of makes sense, too, with the timeline said. Um, again, these have been around for a while. Like the one RPM got back in April almost a year ago looked just like this. So, you know, that it was probably running for a year at that time. So I'm guessing they probably run these for a year. And then as new ones get made, they put those into their operations and then sell the, these as factory test units in big quotation marks. Um, but again, so I figured it'd be a good opportunity to at least you know, see what's going on here. Um, as I have these uh, have these open, again, this is just one of the bad hash boards. Um, I don't, it's kind of an interesting board. So you can see all these capacitors, um, all these mini heat sinks here in blue. Uh, again, one giant, one piece heat sink. I believe there's four FPGA chips up per board. We'll see that when I, if I can figure out how this popped off, I'm not really sure. Cause I don't, I don't really see, you know, any screws anywhere, which is kind of weird. Um, maybe it's screws from the back. Oh yeah, yeah, it screws from the back. Okay, so it looks like there's nine main screws that hold on that heat sink. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the back of it. You can kind of see where your four chips are located, um, which we'll see a little bit later. Another thing to note is there are two SD cards per board, which are here. Uh, these are were covered in white tape, I presume, to hold these in so they don't accidentally pop out during shipping. Um, on one, more of the boards actually had problems when I first got them, but some of them were just because the SD card had been dislodged. So uh, that is something you'll want to check is to make sure that these are fully seated. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'll start undoing these and, and we'll see what's under here. Um, definitely, definitely an interesting uh, machine. Um, again, I'm going to hold my full review and you know recommendations and all that for a future video once I work to get um replacements supposedly they will be sending me some um again they did all the troubleshooting to confirm that they were bad and now they're having me go through the retailer in this case t-swift to do a return order so i'll let you guys know how that goes in my full review video and it'll also be kind of like a full how-to video in the future um so yeah let's uh let's see what's under the hood here all right, so we got the heat sink off again because it's been on here so long and used for so long. You can see all the buildup on the screws. It was kind of hard to pop it off. Um, definitely took a lot more force than I was anticipating. But yeah, you can see the four FPGA chips on here. Um, this is kind of what we're looking at. Uh, some other things that were covered up that have, it looks like, you know, the protective uh, coat on it is to probably avoid short circuiting. You can kind of see blobs of it everywhere, to be honest. Um, so those are the chips. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe one off just to see what's going on here. See if we can uh, see what these are. Well, if we remove some thermal paste and I've confirmed all four chips are the exact same. And I, I'm a little surprised guys, like I, this is completely unexpected. I was expecting Zilnix chips. We're actually looking, or Xilinux, however you want to call it, but these are Intel chips of all things. I knew Intel made FPGAs, but I haven't really ever heard of them much for mining. So it looks like these are, sh it's hard to tell because it's really, uh, it's not perfectly clean. But there are Stratix, there's kind of a good angle that gets it with the light. A Intel Stratix 10 FPGA. Now, again, I don't, I'm not really familiar with the Intel side of FPGA at all. Um, so I'm going to have to do some research on this. But yeah, definitely was surprised when I uh, got that paste off. I removed a little bit on each just to see if they were all the same. And they really are. They are. They're all this Stratix 10 chip. So really interesting. Um, wasn't expected at all. Um, yeah, like I said, just going to have to do more research. Um, but yeah, we got to the bottom of it. So this is what is in a K10 Superscaler. Uh, four 
uh, Intel Stratex 10 chips. So that's what you got. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's kind of, I'm going to put this back together. Um, they are having me return these. So I will be returning these for replacements. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm going to do on the K10 Superscaler today because I, like I said, want to do a full review and how to, um, obviously getting two bad boards and heavily used at that, you know, it gives me mixed feelings so far. I knew they were used, but you know, not to this extent. Um, so far the customer service has been fine though. Uh, a little slow just because of the time difference. So keep that in mind as well. You know, they're in China, Hong Kong, and I mean, North America. So depending where you are, it might be hard to work with them and have them remote in. It, it took a while to get, you know, a time that worked for everyone. Um, but so far, the customer service has been fine. A little disappointed, again, on the actual, like, quality. Um, since they are really expensive. Um, but, yeah, so once those new boards come in, uh, we'll see how they look. Hopefully, they are brand new. Since they're replacements, I doubt it. They'll probably just be like pulled from another machine. Whatever. Um, once I get those here, we'll do a full setup video. It's really, really. Um, it's not. Once you do it once, I feel like it's easy, uh, but it's not intuitive at all. And definitely, depending on your mining experience, you know, I, I do not recommend this machine for beginners in any way. Like you have to kind of know what you're doing. Um, now. Uh, so it wasn't that bad for me to figure out, um, took a little while and then I figured it out. And then once they sent all the firmware packages and the instructions, they do have like a 23 page instruction booklet, which definitely helps, um, for all the more nuanced things. I guess I was able to get it up and running, you know, just regularly, but the more complex things like switching algorithms, stuff like that, uh, instruction booklet definitely helps. Uh, but even in there, it's, it's, you know loosey-goosey on the translation so to speak uh, but yeah so i'll do a whole setup video and how to which i think will help a lot of people that have been stuck there's a lot of questions in all that fpga discords and obviously in the k10 superscaler uh there's no like true official setup video rpm kind of uh live streamed working its way through it but you know that obviously took an hour and you know many mistakes along the way so i'm going to try and make an optimized one for you guys so it really helps you guys get your k10s up and running if you do take the plunge on these again no official recommendation or anything um i am still waiting for replacements and, and then maybe i'll give a full opinion on what i feel about this product um but yeah so we're gonna put this heat take back on get these shipped out to superscaler and hopefully get some replacements here in the near future so that's all i got for today until next time